uh, since you're coming from industry with so much of experience, from an industry perspective, how critical do you think is learner centricity in the design of e-learning? Yeah, so I'll come to that. Basically, in the industry, there are four uh, areas under which products are created. So it depends is what is my answer. Basically, it could be business centric. That is for their business purpose. I've given you examples that if your business had a goal to increase your sales by 20%, and you just want to close the deal, you are not interested in training anybody. So then it's a business perspective, you do not want to train anyone. Similarly, but if you come to learner centricity, that is now you are interested in training your learners, that is if they have to achieve a certain target. Let's go with the same examples, that they have to increase their target by 12%, how do they do this? So you have to train them, that's when learner centricity comes in. Another two examples is when they are content centric. That is, they have no understanding of the content itself. Then you don't train them for further skills. First, get an understanding of the content itself. Mm -hmm. Or lastly, employee-centric. That is, their own skills. Maybe soft skills need to be enhanced. Mm -hmm. They cannot, you know, have a conversation with the client. That is a very big roadblock. Because if you cannot speak to a subject matter expert, you cannot get your queries clarified. And if you do not have a very good understanding of what is to be created, how will you create it? Because SMEs are very, very busy. You have to block their time and then be ready with your bunch of questions. They are not going to come again and again. They are very uh, high level people who are extremely busy. So make sure that all your queries are there in place when you speak to them. So that's why you should be sure that for what goal are you making this. If you are making it for your learners only, that's when learner centricity comes in. Mm -hmm. That's where learner centricity actually becomes critical, yes. even in the industry, yes. right? Okay, so, yeah, you have discussed about learner centricity and then content centricity and employee centricity. At what, what are the different aspects of learner centricity that you need to consider when you are designing your content now? Yeah, so when now your focus is on your learners and you are only interested in maybe training them for a certain product or for a certain skill. So it depends upon what is more useful and meaningful to them. It is not for your business anymore. It is not for your soft skills development. It's not for generating more revenue. It is for your learner. So you should make sure that they have the control. Give them certain challenges because otherwise how will they learn? If they are going to just sit back and watch, they will never learn anything. So give them certain challenges. Let there be activities. Allow them to work with each other. Allow collaboration. So all of this you can do. We have blended learning and within web-based training also, you have webinars. Within that also, sometimes you can have Skype-based sessions and your, all your learners can speak to each other. Mm -hmm. And there also, like I said, you can gamify it, if nothing else. Have leaderboards. When you see your name going up on that board, mm -hmm. it is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you see yourself improving. That gives you a very big motivation to, you know, go in mm -hmm. and look at it. Mm -hmm. That's how you remain engaged. Because if you're going to see yourself improving, you would only want to learn more, mm -hmm. right? So the keep it relevant to them. Now within all of this e-learning, if you start giving absurd examples, again you lost your learner there. Mm -hmm. So make sure it's relevant to your audience. If they have come for onboarding, talk only about onboarding. Don't go and start explaining details which are there later on. They are going to learn it anyways then. So when they are just coming in, you teach them only what is required for beginners. That's how you make sure that you kept your learner in your focus and you're creating your product or your training material, whatever you refer to that. So probably one more question. Based on your experience, uh, what are the common mistakes that people do, especially when they're designing their content, uh, uh, considering the renaissance elements that you have spoken about, which elements are, not, are most missing and which ones have uh, been incorporated so far yeah, as far as your experience is concerned? Hmm. So now I'll tell you um, certain examples where you have kept learner centricity in mind, that is your learner is your focus now. And then you have to now design a product. So let me give you certain examples. First I will speak about responsive design. So your learners basically are not going to sit in the office all the time. They'll be stretching, right? They'll be there in the office to do their work as well as they'll be there to, they want to go home also. So at that time, now if you have made a product which you can look at only on the machine, only on your computer, they cannot access it on their mobile or maybe a tablet mm -hmm. or something else, then how will they look at it? They have to again waste their time in office. Mm -hmm. And all of your time which is very critical to your projects 
gets engaged into going and you know improving oneself instead if you create responsive design now what do i mean by responsive design mm -hmm. it means that is your entire screen adjusts according to your uh, what do you say device device so suppose i create some module here but i create it in adobe rise adobe rise is a software simulation it's a software product in which the entire template is predefined and in that whatever you create if i open the same thing on my cell phone it will adjust your graphics will get adjusted your text will get adjusted you need not worry about it another thing is that if you open on your tablet now or just go and open your entire computer it will look the same so it gets you know expanded and uh, compressed according to whatever you are opening it responds that's why it's called responsive design but another thing you need to make sure is that the quality is always taken care of because you should it should not be that you're scrolling for ages mm -hmm. you know you have text on screen but now am i having it on my phone and i'm just going to keep scrolling i'll just shut it and keep it yeah you know don't do that it's not funny then and also version control when you're making these because sometimes your smartphones may change now our laptops you remember the earlier laptops which were those big ones mm -hmm. and now you have smart screens you have even like smaller screens than this yeah make sure that version control doesn't have to give you a problem because if sometimes while creating your files version issues happen that is your earlier versions have been improvised and that's why you have a latest version okay. now if you created in your earlier version and you're going to you know publish it in your latest version it may not happen you know you will get glitches you will get lags so make sure that version control is taken care of and also file sharing make sure that it is all taken care of on their phones or their tablets anywhere you should be able to download it or just read it now you have to make sure how you do this so again now here when you see on the uh, screen when i show you a thumbs up it means that what am i referring to why is it good and when i show you a thumbs down it means what all challenges can you possibly face mm -hmm. there can be more i'm just giving you a few you know ideas in which you should be careful about so let me just brief you about another example that is uh, now again i said we have to keep learners in mind so how do you keep them engaged i just spoke about gamification you make sure that you reward them give them you know they are put, put their names up as leader or you just give them achievement mm -hmm. you know give them medals or do something else you have to be creative there mm -hmm. so make sure that at each milestone they have some motivation to proceed mm -hmm. gamify the entire thing make sure that you do that because your learners will always remain engaged they would want to do this and finally they you know uh, so many games we've seen on our phone mm -hmm. which are challenge based people have stuck to it mm -hmm. forever trying to complete that challenge mm -hmm. so you know when you give that that yeah. whether you can do it or not people will say of course i can do it and they <laughs> attempt it yeah. at least yeah. attempt it right? right so but make sure that the challenge you're facing is completion time they may forever sit doing mm -hmm. one thing they'll never finish the entire thing ye mil ke se nahi raha you know you will just sit and do that much so try and avoid that see that the completion time is not too much or if they are going to go remote or they are going to go to some different places make sure that it reaches till there now how a bandwidth issues are there that uh, you have to take care from your technology expert and make sure that your remote users are also able to uh, you know get access to your products ensure that that is there and also make sure that no extra tools they need to install in their phones mm -hmm. because not everybody has that much of capacity mm -hmm. so make mm -hmm. sure that that doesn't happen mm -hmm. these are possible challenges and also in learner centricity i can say that uh, to make it more engaging and more interesting for your learners make sure that there are branching scenarios don't tell everything on one page Hmm. like branch it out like if i have uh, decided one thing that yeah i can face a possible problem here then take me to smaller problems there don't just tell all possible problems in one place hmm. so take branching out scenarios break it up into small small pieces hmm. people find it much more relatable and much more faster to learn when you have small small pieces hmm. and you can complete it hmm. that much is so much better and also give them feedback if they are continuously not being able to do anything hmm. then tell them why where are you going wrong so you know sometimes you may have seen human characters like not cartoonish character cartoons also work huh? it's not that they don't mm -hmm. but then how much seriously everybody will take it it's questionable so but if you have a human character which will simply come up and tell you let me help you mm -hmm. you know let's do this together mm -hmm. 
सो वेन दैट हैपन्स पीपल अगेन गेट टर्म्स अप टू कम एंड ट्राई वंस मोर और सिंपली सोशली जिस पुट इट इन टू सोशल इंटरेक्शन वेन दे हैव दियर पीयर्स अलॉन्ग विद दैम ट्राइंग टू अटैम्प्ट द सेम थिंग दे विल ऑल्सो हैव अ मोटिवेशन टू अटैम्प्ट नो बडी इज डूइंग इट वाई शुड आई डू इट यू नो दैट काइंड ऑफ स्कूल ऑफ थॉट कम्स इट सो इफ इट्स सोशली डन एवरीबडी विल ट्राई but it depends again upon their background how much of workload do they have if they have tremendous workload and you're going to tell them to go into social media and do it mm-hmm. again questionable yeah, and also make sure that they are given feedback and interactivity as much as possible right. they are not just sitting back and listening because they'll tune out right. and during mm-hmm. all of this the challenge which you can face is your sme because you're doing this throughout you're creating branching scenarios you're creating so many new new things for that you need to make sure that the technical content is accurate there is not a single mistake in it mm. because then your learners will learn something which is incorrect mm. and which is the biggest blunder you will make other than all design elements that is the biggest blunder you will make that telling them wrong thing mm. so make sure that your sme is available mm. and ensure that the sme is available way before you start releasing and publishing and designing these things so sme availability is one thing and also how will you track this they are going ahead and going into scenarios and going and trying and different things but you have to track their success or failure or where are they right now current status mm-hmm. so make sure you have tracking that can be done through project management right now there are multiple tools which allow you to do this so but that goes into project management mm-hmm. a designer need not worry so much about it but that is a possible challenge which you can face and like i said quality assurance is always there you have to make sure quality is taken care of and lastly consistency because everywhere if you are going to have different things and you are going to start putting different colors and different graphics which have no meaning with each other <laughs> it just gives a very poor impression yeah so yeah these are few examples okay thank you my pleasure